Creating custom music for a wedding film can seem complicated, but today I'm gonna to show you how I did just that by taking this. Cool night, Sunday mornings on your way in. And turning it into this. Cool night, Sunday mornings on your way in, out of the gray. Hi guys, I'm Camden Johnson. I'm a wedding filmmaker and a musician, and along with my wife, I've been running CJ Films for six years. Something that my wife and I are always trying to do is push ourselves to be more creative when editing. And recently, we've been experimenting with how we incorporate music in our films. Since we are both musicians, music is extremely important to us, and we wanna make sure that the soundtrack of our films is custom tailored to each couple and their story. So what does this look like? Well, for starters, we are by no means composing all of the music in our films ourselves. We are not that talented and that's not in our wheelhouse. But on the flip side of things, we're also not just taking one or two songs and simply slapping them onto our films. We like to take an approach that's somewhere in the middle, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that on a film that we just completed. Let's look back on this moment from Nathan and Katie's wedding, where Nathan surprised Katie at the reception by singing Hold My Girl by George Ezra. I've got time. I've got love, got confidence, you rise above. Give me a minute to hold my girl. Give me a minute to hold my girl. Going into editing their film, I knew that I wanted to incorporate Nathan's song somehow. However, our recording of it just felt a little bit too empty. You can mainly just hear his voice and the acoustic guitar is just faintly in there. So we wanted to make sure that we had a track underneath his song that was full and that really drove home the emotional impact and significance of this moment from their reception. Here are the five steps that I took to create a custom score around Nathan's song. Number one, identify the key of the song. In order for us to add any sort of supplemental music or tracks to Nathan's song, we first have to know what key he's playing in. There's many ways that you can go about doing this. But for me, as a guitar player, I just analyzed the chords that he was playing on guitar, and I figured out that he was playing in the key of G. Number two, identify the approximate tempo of the song. I say approximate because Nathan was playing in free time without any sort of metronome or click, and so his tempo is gonna be fluctuating throughout the song. So what I did is I used a just metronome app that lets me tap out uh, tempo to find the beats per minute, and I found out that Nathan is playing at roughly 70 beats per minute. Number three, use a music library to find a track in the same key with a similar tempo. Depending on your music library of choice, you may or may not have the ability to filter songs based on key and tempo. We use Musicbed because they have the ability for us to filter based on this criteria. So I know right off the bat that it's gonna be basically impossible for me to find a song that's in the same key, the same tempo, same time signature, and in the same chord progression that Nathan is playing of Hold My Girl. So what I'm gonna have to do is find an ambient track that's in the same key with a similar tempo and reorchestrate the chord progression of that track to play along the same chord progression that Nathan is playing. So I have gone to the advanced tab and selected the key of G major, the key that Nathan is playing in. I have selected a BPM range of about 65 to 75. And then I also am filtering based on ambient tracks. Finding an ambient genre is gonna allow us to find a song that's just empty enough, allowing us to reorchestrate the song to play the same chord progression that Nathan is playing in his song. So after we have filtered everything based on that criteria that we are looking for, I was able to find a track right here, Magic Hour Instrumental by The Dramatics, and I think it should fit perfect for what we're trying to do with supplementing Nathan's song. Number four, reorchestrate the chord progression of the song. I use a MIDI keyboard that I have plugged in to my computer to edit along with. If you don't have one of these, you can just go to a virtual piano website and pull up a virtual piano and you can play along on just your normal regular QWERTY keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen to this first note to try to identify what note this is. So I know that we're in the key of G, it's likely that this first note is gonna be a G. So if I play on piano, or even the octave higher, 
I can hear that that is indeed the same note that's being played here. I can play them both at the same time, the track here and my piano. So I know that that is a G. Next thing is to identify the next note. So let me play the next note here. As a musician, I've kind of been able to identify the relationships between notes. So I can tell based off of that one, I'm gonna guess that that is a C. So I'll just play that to verify. So that is a C. So now I can identify this one is a G, this one is a C, and I'm just gonna go through all of these notes here or the chords here and identify which is which, and then I'm going to lay out the entire chord progression of Hold My Girl using all of these notes that I have identified here. So I'm gonna solo just the music here so that you can hear exactly how I have recreated the chord progression for Hold My Girl using just these ambient notes from this track that I found. So what I've done is I've created a track that maintains a uniform BPM the whole way through, which leads us to our next step, number five, retime the vocals to match the tempo of the track. If I expand the retiming for the vocal elements, you can see how we have changed the timing of Nathan's vocals to match the tempo of the song. You can see that some elements here in the green have stayed the same. This is where we kind of built our timeline of the song to start from. So you can hear we started it from right here. I'll play this for you. I've been waiting for you to come around and tell me the truth about everything you're going through. Now to keep that same tempo with the time that we have created with the song, the second clip here, we've had to speed up a little bit. If we kept it at the same time of just originally how we captured it on camera, let me show you what that would have sounded like here. I've been waiting for you to come around and tell me the truth. You can hear that it lags just a little bit. So we speed it up to match the same time as the song here. And we're gonna do that all the way through the song. Right here, we had to go from a change of speeding it up 104% to slowing it down to 98%. Cool nights, Sunday mornings on your way and out of the gray. So that was with it sped up and slowed down. Here's what this looked like kind of straight as we captured it in normal speed. Got nothing to lose. Cool nights. Sunday mornings on your way out of the grave. So it doesn't work perfectly. So what we've had to do is do that retiming of speeding parts up, slowing parts down, keeping some parts at the same time so that this whole section through here, the song is at the same tempo and Nathan's singing is at the same tempo. Bonus step number six, add supplemental instruments. Now this is not absolutely necessary, but this is something that I wanted to specifically implement with Nathan's song. So since he's playing acoustic guitar, it gets a little bit lost in our recording of it. We just have a feed directly from the DJ's microphone and we're not picking up his acoustic guitar super well. So as an acoustic guitar player myself, I just listened along and I just recorded my acoustic guitar to add that acoustic element of Nathan's guitar picking into this video. I've been waiting for you to come around and tell me the truth about everything you're going through. My girl, you've got nothing to lose. 
After a little bit of reverb and EQ has been added, here's what that acoustic guitar sounds like in the final mix. I've been waiting for you to come around and tell me the truth. It's faint, but it's there enough that it kind of subconsciously helps the mind understand that Nathan is indeed playing the acoustic guitar. So as you can see in Nathan and Katie's full nine minute timeline here, we have used five different songs to create one master custom score throughout the entire film. Of course, the editing and manipulation that we did to Nathan's song was the most kind of intensive thing that we did. But I wanted to show you one other thing that we did to really create a custom score for their film. So here's how the transition sounds between the final two songs in their film, just with a simple crossfade at the start and end of each song. It works all right. They're both in the same key still. It's both the key of G, which helps with the smooth transition. The biggest problem I had with this was the fact that the first song is got this do 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 da 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 type of tempo, whereas the second song, it's got this kind of smooth, just like slow rise up. And that drastic difference uh, I was not crazy about. So let me show you how I created a smoother transition between these two songs. So as I was listening to this track, I noticed that the piano is doing this kind of faster rhythm that I wasn't liking to transition with, but the strings, they're playing this slower rhythm that I feel like I could transition with. Pay attention to the difference here between the piano and the strings. So you can hear the piano is doing this somewhat of a faster pace and the acoustic guitar at the very end starts to pick up this faster pace, whereas the strings, they are playing this right here. And I thought, well, what if I just record my own strings because they, they fade out, the strings fade out right here. And the, and the strings, fade out pretty quickly right there. And I thought, well, what if I just add my own strings that hold out right there? So I've got um, GarageBand opened up at the same time I've got my keyboard set in as an input into GarageBand and I've got strings set up as my instrument of choice. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard like I do, you can actually just use your normal QWERTY keyboard and open up the musical typing within GarageBand and you can use your normal QWERTY keyboard uh, as if it was a MIDI keyboard. So what I did is I just figured out uh, those notes that the strings were playing here and I just played it on my own piano to see how that sounded. And I thought, okay, let me hold out that last note with transitioning into the next song and see, see how that sounds. And I think already that sounds a whole lot better. I noticed that in the second song, there's kind of this low bass note that hits. And I recorded uh, that bass note coming in and hitting as well. Let me show you what that sounds like. Bass note. And that allows for a super smooth transition here. Here's exactly what I recorded out of GarageBand. The other thing I did is I then went and added in even in a lower note. So I added in a octave lower than that just to really fill that void between the two songs. and then add it into the song to transition between these two songs. Here's what all of this sounds like in the final version. Mm -hmm. 
So this transition isn't perfect, but I think it's definitely better than just a simple crossfade on those two songs. And then the best man speech is happening on top of all of this, and it helps to kind of blend any imperfections that I have within this transition. And you can hear how underneath the best man speech, this transition can almost go unnoticed to the untrained ear. You really do must love me. I, it's something I, I can never understand, but Nathan always sees people before him, always sacrifices, you know, and, and, and sets apart his personal comfort. So that's how I created a custom score for a wedding film. If you've made it this far and have found this video useful and informative, then you may be interested in my Music Masterclass, a comprehensive guide to everything music for wedding filmmakers. In this course, I'll be covering everything from essential music theory for wedding filmmakers, to how to significantly cut down your time spent searching for songs, to in-depth explanations on music editing, going way more in depth than what I did in this video with manipulation, looping, editing, transitioning, and a whole lot more. You can sign up for my newsletter in the description to stay informed about when the course will be released, as well as being the first to know about any giveaways and early bird discounts. Thanks so much for watching.